Here's lesson three of the second unit. This lesson is on the equation of a circle. Let's start by looking at the definition of a circle. A circle is the set of all points that are the same distance from a fixed point, which we call the center of the circle. The radius is the distance from the center of the circle, that fixed point, to any other point on the circle. What I'm going to do next is show you the equation of a circle that is not centered at the origin and the equation of a circle that is centered at the origin. And then after I show you the equations, I'll give you a detailed explanation as to why the equation is able to describe the relationship between any x, y point and the radius of the circle. So first of all, let's start with any circle. So the circle that it could be centered anywhere. It doesn't have to be at the origin. In that case, we call the center of the circle point HK, and the relationship between any x, y point and the radius is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared is equal to the radius squared. If the circle is centered at the origin, that would make the h and k values zero, which means the equation would simplify to just x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Now, why do these equations describe the relationship between any x, y point and the radius? Well, maybe let's look at a more clear diagram of a circle. Here I have a circle drawn that's centered at the origin. So I have the center labeled as the point zero, zero. If you can imagine me drawing a radius from this center, zero, zero, to any point on the circle, so anywhere on the circumference of the circle, it would connect to the circle at some point x, y. So I'll label this point on the circumference of the circle as point x, y. And I've drawn the radius. Let me label that as r to represent the radius of the circle. Now, if I were to describe the relationship between this x, y point and the radius, if I were to go from the origin to that x, y point, I could travel x units parallel to the x axis and then y units parallel to the y axis. So let me label those side lengths as x and y. And notice what I've created here is a right angle triangle. And what do we know about the relationship between the sides in a right angle triangle? We know that the sum of the squares of the shorter two sides, so x squared plus y squared, is equal to the square of the longest side. In this case, the longest side is the radius, so it's equal to the radius squared. And this is the equation of a circle. x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And that relationship between the x, y point and the radius holds true for any x, y point on the circumference of the circle if the circle is centered at the origin. So hopefully now you can understand where this equation of a circle comes from. Let's now practice writing the equation of a circle. Example one says write the equation of a circle with center zero, zero and a radius of in part a three. So it gives us the radius. And when we write the equation of a circle, remember we write it in the format of x squared plus y squared equals the radius squared. And in this case, we know the radius is three. So we would write it as three squared. And whenever we're expressing our final answer for the equation of a circle, we'll need to simplify the radius squared. So we'll need to actually evaluate what three squared is. So in this case, the equation of this circle would be x squared plus y squared equals nine. And that'll be our final answer for the equation of that circle. Let's try another one. This time the radius of our circle is a half. So when I write the equation of this circle, it would be x squared plus y squared equals a half squared. And remember when the base of your power is a fraction, what we need to do is apply the exponent to the numerator and the denominator. So I need to square the one and square the two. So one squared is one and two squared is four. So the equation of this circle is x squared plus y squared equals a quarter. Let's move on to example two, where this time it gives us the equation of the circle and it asks us for what the radius is. Example two says, what is the radius of a circle defined by the equation x squared plus y squared equals 36? First thing you need to remember is the number that you see on the right side of the equation is what the radius squared is equal to. So in this case, the radius squared is 36. If we're interested in the radius, we'll have to isolate r. On the left, r is being squared. So to isolate r, we have to do the inverse of squaring, which is square rooting. So r would be equal to the square root of 36, which is 6. 
So the radius of this circle is six units. Example three says a circle has a center at the origin and passes through the point five, three. Determine the equation of the circle. So this time it gives us an x, y point that is on the circumference of the circle. So in order to determine the equation of this circle, let me start by writing out the general formula for the equation of any circle centered at the origin, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. In order to write the equation of this specific circle, I'm going to have to solve for what r squared is equal to. To do that, I will sub my x, y point in for x and y. That will give me 5 squared plus 3 squared is equal to r squared. 5 squared is 25, 3 squared is 9. So I can see that r squared is equal to 34. Now I'm not actually interested in what r is equal to. I don't care what the radius is. The question doesn't ask for it. It just wants the equation of the circle. And in the equation of the circle, I just need to know what the r squared value is. And I have it. It's 34. So I can write my final answer. x squared plus y squared equals r squared, which is 34. So this is the equation of the circle centered at the origin with 0.53 on its circumference. The next question is a very typical question for this section of the unit. It wants to know if a point lies inside, outside, or on a specific circle. Let's look at the general rule for determining if any given point falls inside, outside, or on any given circle. If the given x, y point is on the circle, then x squared plus y squared would be equal to the radius squared that's given in the equation of the circle. If the x, y point is outside the circle, then x squared plus y squared would be greater than the given r squared value. And if point x, y is inside the circle, then x squared plus y squared would be less than the r squared value that's given by the circle. Let's try it out for the information given in this question. It says, is the point negative 5, 9 inside, outside, or on the circle x squared plus y squared equals 100? What we have to do is sub in the point negative 5, 9 for x and y into the equation of the circle that we have and see if x squared plus y squared is less than, equal to, or greater than the 100 value that is the r squared of this circle. So we're checking. What is the relationship between negative 5 squared and 9 squared in comparison to this 100 value that is the r squared value of this circle? Is it greater than, less than, or equal to? So I just put an equal sign with a question mark above, and we're going to test out to see the relationship between the left and right side of this equation. On the left, I have 25 plus 81. And how does that relate to 100? Well, 25 plus 81 is 106. I know that is greater than 100. That tells me that the point negative 5, 9 is actually outside of the circle that's given. Let's verify that in Desmos. So if I graph the equation of the circle x squared plus y squared equals 100, we have it right here. And if I were to plot the point negative 5, 9, we figured out that its x squared plus y squared value would be bigger than 100. It was 106, so that should tell us that it's outside the circle. And if I plot it, notice that that point negative 5, 9 is just outside the circle. So we got the correct answer. We should summarize our answer by saying, therefore, the point negative 5, 9 is outside of the circle. Let's move on to question number 5. This is the first time we're finding the equation of a circle where the center is not at the origin. So let me remind you what the equation of a circle not centered at the origin looks like. It is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared h and k that you see in this equation is the center of the circle. So in this case, 3, 4 are our h and our k values. And it tells us the radius, r, is 8. So to write the equation of the circle, I'll just plug in my h, k, and r, and then I'll have the equation. The answer would be x minus 3 squared plus y minus 4 squared equals 8 squared. And remember, when writing the final answer for the equation of a circle, we need to simplify the radius squared. So I'll actually have to evaluate 8 squared. 
my final answer will be x minus 3 squared plus y minus 4 squared equals 64. And now let's go on to the last question of the lesson. It says to determine the shortest distance from the point 10, 7 to the edge of the circle, x squared plus y squared equals 49. Now you can see in this diagram, I have the point 10, 7 labeled, and I have the graph of the circle, x squared plus y squared equals 49. Now I've given you this so you can visualize what we need to do, and then we'll algebraically calculate it. And I put an important tip here. It says that the shortest distance from a point to a circle is always going to be along a line that goes from the point along a line that goes through the center of the circle. So the first thing we're going to do is calculate the distance from that point 10, 7 to the center of the circle. And we can do that using your distance formula. So I'll start by finding the distance from the point 0, 0, which is at the center of the circle, to the point 10, 7. And using the distance formula, I know it will be equal to the square root of the difference in the x-coordinates squared, so 10 minus 0 squared, plus the difference in the y-coordinates squared, so 7 minus 0 squared. If I simplify underneath the square root, I would have 10 squared plus 7 squared, that's 100 plus 49, which is 149. That has an approximate value of 12 point something, but we're going to keep the exact value for now. So I know the distance of the entire line from the point 10, 7, all the way to the center of the circle. I don't want that entire length. I just want the portion of that line that goes from 10, 7 to the circumference of the circle. I could figure out that portion of the line if I subtracted the radius of the circle from the square root of 149, which is the length of the entire line. So let's find the radius of the circle. Since the equation of the circle is x squared plus y squared equals 49, I know that the r squared value is 49. And then to calculate the radius, I would do the inverse of squaring, which is square rooting. And I can solve for the radius to be 7 units long. So I know the entire length of the line we see in the diagram is root 149. I know the radius is 7. If I find the difference in those two, that will give me the portion of the line segment I'm looking for, which is the shortest distance from point 10, 7 to the circle. So the shortest distance is equal to the square root of 149 minus 7. And we can get an approximate value for that with our calculators. To two decimal places, it is about 5.21 units. That's our final answer, and that brings us to the end of the lesson. Make sure you go to jensenmath.ca and try out the practice problems.